to be here. Let me share my screen, quickly jump into the presentation due to time. Um, we are going to be focusing today on the Belmont Forum and particularly opportunities for Africa to engage uh, not only pan across the continent, but also with their colleagues across the globe. So what is the Belmont Forum? It's basically a partnership of funding organizations, international science councils. Sorry. It's, I just want to check that somebody is recording because I've started. Yes, I started the recording. Beautiful. So it's a partnership of funding of organizations, international science councils, regional consortia that are committed to the advancement of inter and transdisciplinary science. It is basically guided by the Belmont Challenge. And this is a challenge that was issued to worldwide organizations and agencies to encourage international and transdisciplinary research so that we can provide knowledge for the understanding, the mitigation, and the adaptation to global environmental change. So when we look across the globe, the colored countries and regions are agencies and institutions that have engaged with the Belmont Forum. And when we look specifically to Africa, there are two members um, of, that are within Africa that are a part of the Belmont Forum. That is Paz Rez from Cote d'Ivoire and NRF from South Africa. So realizing that there is a lack and gaps within the African continent, we've really been trying to increase connectivity across the continent with the intention to build responses specific to Africa. So in order to partake with the Belmont Forum, your proposal needs to be transdisciplinary. And you would hear me say this word several times throughout the presentation. It just basically means that we need scientists who are from social science, natural science, as well as stakeholders that are a part of your proposal. And we've recently added the health sciences as well. We realized that that was a gap and there are many, many implications of natural and social on health and vice versa. So that's a new part of this transdisciplinary network and nation that we have formed. And we've kind of carved out an area for transdisciplinary. It basically wants you to concentrate on those cross-discipline problems that originate from the real world. And that's where engaging with stakeholders is critical for the Belmont Forum. And stakeholders is left very broad. It can be indigenous populations, tribal leaders, government officials, policy makers, decision makers, community leaders, the, the range of stakeholders, we've left it wide so that we can get those real world problems. And just a heads up, we are offering a course in transdisciplinarity in August, around August 10th. And it's a follow-up to one course that we had before, which was the introductory course. It's, it's taught by Gabrielle Bama out of Australia. And it basically will define how to maintain stakeholder relationships. And this is something that the Belmont Forum does with its, its uh, funded participants. We provide that professional development throughout the lifespan of their proposal and beyond. So we've talked about transdisciplinary. Another component is that your proposal must be transnational, which means we need at least three countries to be involved and working on one proposal. Now, you may pick which country you want to have that proposal in, but we must have at least three countries that are participating. You can decide to have two within Africa or three within Africa. It's up to you. But those participating organizations must be partnering with the Belmont Forum in order to make them eligible. 
the overall goal of this transdisciplinary and transnational approach is to build this global transdisciplinary culture where we can go across boundaries in order to address common needs. Um, Co-design is important. You, you don't just come up with a proposal behind the bench or within your classroom or in your office, but it must be done in collaboration with the stakeholders so that you can build this common language within and across nations. It's important also for knowledge transfer. That's really important for the Bauman Forum because we want to have proposals that do not exist in a bubble but is open and available to solve complex decision-making processes. This is a little movie of the network that has been formed through this transdisciplinary and transnational approach. It's all the projects that the Belmont Forum has funded, all participants of those projects across the entire globe. The network has really developed into something that is, that is really unique because we are building this next generation and current generation of transdisciplinary scientists across the world. Um, looking at the African continent, it's not, again, not as dense as what we will see in Europe or perhaps in the um, Northern American continent, but we are trying to change that. I want to urge you that if you do decide to develop a proposal for some of the things that I will highlight later on in the presentation, is that you consider what is your greatest added value. This is something that the funders tend to concentrate heavily on. Do you want knowledge exchange? Are you doing this for synthesis or policy reason? What about interconnected technology? These highlighted components in your proposal help to demonstrate to the funder that you align with their funding trajectory and the reasons behind their, their uh, funding pot to see. So let's get into the meat and why we're really here. Let's talk about some CRAs that are on the horizon. I'm going to highlight about four of them that I think could apply to the African continent and specifically to health scientists across the continent. Thus far, we've had 17 collaborative research actions. That's Bauman Forum's fancy name for call for research proposals. We have 17 of them. Climate, Environment and Health was a recent one launched in 2019. Um, there are several of them who that are on deck to be released as soon as July 23rd. So on July 23rd, the Belmont Forum will release Pathways to Sustainability. This is where we will share on our website, and I've put the contact details in the chat for the website, um, the call text. The call text is a guide that tells you what kinds of proposals they are looking for. The rationale behind Pathways to Sustainability is to deliver sound science-based pathways, including comprehensive targets, all for the use for decision and policy makers. It is to assist them, to help them to exploit synergies across the SDGs. And it's important because this CRA, or Call for Research Proposals, is based on addressing multiple SDGs at once. So you can't just be working on one of them. We are looking for those really cross-cutting projects that transcend several SDGs. While scoping this, scoping is we go out into the community and we listen from, to the experts and they tell us where the gaps are in SDG research. We've realized that the network to develop research and robust research proposals is not quite ready to 
provide proposals that, are, that are transcend these SDGs. So initially we were thinking to have this multi-stage proposal where we do networking, we identify the pathways, and then we have these large research projects. Now, on July 23rd, we will just be focusing on a call for research proposals that build the network. Build the network in preparation for these robust research proposals. So we're expecting that the projects will focus on who you hope to influence, how will you influence them, what are the most effective means for building your network? Are you building a current network? Are you trying to establish a new network? And exactly how will you go about to do this? These, um, it's launched on July 23rd, as I mentioned. We typically give about six weeks for um, folks to assemble their transnational team, pull their proposal together, and then submit to the Belmont Forum. So when we open on July 23rd, it will probably close around the first week in September. So you would have to submit your research proposals by then. The good news is that there is currently funding for participation by African scientists on this research call. Future Earth has put forth 300,000 US dollars to support specifically and only African scientists. This is in addition to what the National Research Foundation or NRF in South Africa will also be putting on the table to support South African scientists. So there's a small pot of money already in development and already on the table to support persons from this region. The key thing would be to connect with other scientists and to form a team and submit a proposal. Again, details will be, will be put on the Belmont Forum website. Another CRA or collaborative research action is migration and global change. This will potentially be launched in 2021, so just next year. It's based on the fact that there's been a projection that 200 million climate migrants will exist by 2050. And we are thinking that it may be as a result or an impact from climate change due to shoreline erosion and closer flooding, et cetera. We want to, con to do this CRA at the appropriate scale, taking into consideration a systems perspective, so integrated impacts, not single things, and a human-centered -cent approach. So this is where we would consider health coming to play a large role in this CRA. We've really focused in on Africa just because there's the projection that 86 million of that 200 million will be from the Sub-Saharan Africa region. And by focusing on, in on Africa, we are developing a scoping meeting happening this Friday where we will invite stakeholders and invite experts on the science of migration to come and tell us what should this call look like. We are going to be focusing on four areas, data and methods for integrated migration, governance and policy in migration, incorporating global change in migration and mobility models, and involuntary migration, displacement, and human security research frontiers. Each and every one of those four categories needs to consider the health cross cuts across, them, across all of them. So the health scientists, we need them to show up on this Friday, July 10th, so that we can really shape what this migration call will look like. Again, this is being led by the National Research Foundation, so that's South Africa. They are at the forefront of this, as well as Future Earth Africa. They are also at the forefront of this. 
it is not at this at the point for dollars to be on the table yet because we are deciding what the core will look like but towards the end of the year actually at the end of october we will know the financial amount that has been put forth for this uh cre but if you are a part of the fund of the scoping meeting this friday you have a leg up to understand the direction that the call will be going in. Next, we have Climate, Environment, and Health. Climate, Environment, and Health 1 was launched in 2019. Climate, Environment, and Health 2 will be launched next year, so 2021. Let me quickly give you a brief understanding of what Climate, Environment, and Health 1 concentrated on. We looked at food systems and nutrition, heat and health, and climate-sensitive infectious diseases. Those were the three categories that we asked people to submit their proposals framed around. Currently, we funded nine proposals, and they range across those three areas that I mentioned. I also have a link at the bottom so that you can go and read up and learn about these nine proposals. For Climate, Environment, and Health One, we put 12 million euros on the table to support um, the UKRI, which is the United Kingdom Research Institute, also put money on the table to fund lower and middle income countries. So we have participants in Climate, Environment, and Health One who come from Kenya, who come from Cote d'Ivoire, and Cote d'Ivoire also put money on the table for climate, environment, and health. We anticipate that NRF will do that as well. And we are currently reaching out to other funding agencies, such as the World Bank, to get them on board to perhaps support middle and, middle and lower end income countries. So this is what the network looked like for climate, environment, and health. As we can see again, Africa, we need to do some work there, but this is missing Cote d'Ivoire as well as Kenya. They also participated in Climate, Environment and Health One. And finally, I'll wrap up with the African Regional Call. This call is something we're working on along with the others that really focuses on Africa and African priorities. It is based on the Climate Change Vulnerability Index that basically tells us that the risk to African countries and across the African continent from climate change adverse outcomes is higher than all other regions across the globe. When we do a regional breakdown, we realize that 27 out of the 54 African countries are in dire risk to um, climate change related adverse outcomes. So we are really building this African regional call as a bottom up process where we are looking for local problems within African countries to pair them with local solutions. And to top it all off, these projects once submitted must be led by an African researcher. So it must be led by an African scientist we can have scientists from other regions be a part of the proposal, but the lead PI must be within Africa. Thus far, we've been reaching out to funding agencies and other stakeholders. Toon has also helped me to chart for Nigeria, what the priorities and the needs are in that country. So we still have some work to be done, but we've of course been moving across the Southern West and Eastern African countries to find out what are their priorities for global environmental change research. We're finding out that blue economy, water security, food security, energy and education are rising to the top and we probably will shape the call to be something in response to those. But we're really looking for people to tell us the direction to go in and also to be putting dollars on the table. And it's not only government agencies that are interested in this. We've been speaking with the Tony Elumelu Foundation, so also philanthropy, and looking to see their interest in perhaps supporting scientists to engage in this African regional core. So the 
In conclusion, the ultimate goal is to be able to put your project on this Belmont Forum map, to have a lot more coming from the African region, and to build a really strong and robust transdisciplinary network that also includes the African continent as well. So that's it from me, and I guess I will answer any questions. So thank you very much, uh, Makiba.